If you've been itching to build yourself a brand spanking new gaming PC, then today's video, I am sure it's not going to disappoint, where this whole system is going to come under the price of a brand new RTX 4070. And we've got here an RX 6700 10 gig, which the performance of this GPU, it's no slouch. Fantastic mid-range gaming GPU. In fact, I'd say it's one of the best, if not the best value GPU to get out there at the moment if you wanna play games at 1080p and 1440p. We also recently checked it out in a video comparing it to other GPUs and it's got some really good performance. Then for the motherboard, we got budget. 12th gen motherboard from here from Jingyu. Checked out this motherboard as well. Great value for money. It's actually a 13th gen motherboard, but it works of course with 12th gen, which we're going with the i3-12100F, which is coming in perfectly on that price point of $100. Then we've got for memory, 32 gigabytes of DDR4. Never been a better time to buy RAM as well as SSDs. These are so cheap. The one terabyte SSD, $35 delivered to your door shipped. And then for a power supply and the case, I'm going with some used options. However, I will throw up the tally of today's build if you were to go with a new power supply as well as a new case. Though Tech yes City, I always love looking out for bargains, whether it's on the new market or the used market. And I got this case for 15 bucks, as well as this power supply here. It's a 500 watt FSP for $10. So that's gonna be saving me quite a bit of money on the total tally. And then we're also gonna be spicing up this build with some custom white sleeve cables, which you'll notice I put in the total build tally there. However, since the case that I got for 15 bucks has no LED fans, which I really wanna do and spice up today's build, I'm gonna be adding in three white ring LED fans, which I found for around $13 delivered. Though as always, with the Tech Yes Value Gaming PC, we are not just going to be building it, we're also going to be tuning it and then undervolting it and seeing how it performs in modern games. And I'll also show you the settings up on the screen too, right after this sponsor spot. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in the description below. completed without a hitch. Everything was looking really good. I woke up really early in the morning to take some shots in the dark as well, but I noticed one thing was just triggering me. And I usually don't get OCD about really anything except this blue ring on this CPU cooler was, yeah, I just kept looking at it. So what I did was I took the cooler off and just got a black permanent marker and then canceled out that blue ring and put the CPU cooler back on. And I just think this build now looks 100%, especially for the money that we've paid. But now more importantly, it is time to tune up this PC, which we've already gone into the BIOS and locked in our XMP profiles and gear one ratio. Now this motherboard is really janky where there's just settings all over the place. A lot of things don't make sense. They don't tell you if incremental changes are in millivolts or in whatever it is but we managed to somehow get an undervolt of, I think it's a thousand millivolt. I did try two and a half thousand on this value and it just gave out blue screens. Then I tried 1500 blue screens again, tried a thousand and it seems to be working fine. At least with this motherboard, we got the main ability to lock in our XMPs and our gear one ratio, which that's the most important thing for performance when it comes to gaming, especially with an i3-12100F. But you may notice here we've got MSI Afterburner open, and this is with the RX 6700. We're gonna show you the quick and easy way to undervolt this uh, GPU. So install this program, just hit Control F on your keyboard, and then we can just really 
uh, hold down the left uh, click and click on this point here. And all we do here is we drag this down to 2400. And this is with AMD RX 6000 series GPUs. I find they all have a similar sort of range where they want to sit at. And then we do the same. We hold down the left click on this voltage right here. And we just drop this down, uh, down to around 1090. I usually like to start off with around 1080. But in this case, 1090 should be okay. If you just want to like one, one pop this and set and forget, usually 1100 will give you instant results without any crashing. We're gonna try 1090 here straight away. Just lock that in and then we go, uh, we can close that down with a little X. So, but also you may notice there's the memory clock here, which we're gonna hold down the left click on the little dot here for memory clock and drag this all the way to the right. And since this is an RX 6700, it's going to have a max of 2150. Now, other GPUs in the RX 6000 range may go a bit higher, but usually it's around 2200 that this thing tops, these GPUs top out at. And then after we're done with that, we can left click this save icon and drop it into two. And we can then uh, start benchmarking and seeing the before and after results of now our tuned PC and undervolted PC. Okay, so we've just uh, booted up Valorant, the first game here, and the reason I'm testing this is because lately when I've been selling PCs, a lot of people are asking me about the FPS in Valorant, whether it's a cheap PC or an expensive PC, I'm constantly getting asked about this game. And it's actually pretty good because we have here the um, graphics settings are defaulting to high. And sorry, I'm just in the middle of frags. It's kind of hard to concentrate, but so we've got here, the graphics quality is at high and this is what it's defaulted to. And we're getting here around 400 to 500 FPS and the GPU is still not being maxed, which means that we're still kind of CPU heavy at this stage. And the next title we've got up here is Warzone 2. We are in this island battle zone. This is where I benchmark actually. And what we've got right here is 1080p high settings. So we've got right here, uh, 1080p just high settings. And so now we're just gonna start benchmarking this and see what kind of average FPS we can get as well as the 1% and 0.1% lows, which is essentially the worst FPS. So the next game we got up here is Dota 2 1080p maximum settings and this is just during multiplayer and on average we're getting around 170 FPS at max graphical settings and it's a very snappy experience. The 0.1% lows there are also really good for this game, hitting around 50. So this is gonna give you a great experience for Dota 2. So this PC ended up just being absolutely phenomenal for the money. You can also in the future have a little bit of upgradability in terms of both GPU and CPU. It absolutely impressed when it came to not just the FPS, but the looks. And then also when we undervolted it, we dropped the power consumption down. That's gonna keep all the temperatures down. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in some of those games, the temperatures were low on the GPU and the CPU, and it's actually starting to heat up here in Japan. And I've got a shirt on, and so that should explain the ambient temperatures are pretty hot. And I generally don't like using air con, especially if I don't have to, and I kind of do prefer the heat coming from uh, Queensland, Australia, where <laughs> it's usually hot all year round. But this PC right here, it has never been a better time to build a gaming PC and for under $600, you're gonna get something that looks really good, it's gonna perform really good, it's gonna have low temperatures, and even on top of that, if you wanna upgrade some parts in the future, you can, say, put in an i5-13500 or 13600K, change the GPU over in a few years' time, and you'll get even more life in a few years' time, and you'll still be on an extremely good budget. So there's absolutely nothing to complain about with this build. All the parts just came together and made something so special and I can get good frags on this thing. I can get really smooth FPS or 
I can just play on higher ultra settings, which is what we did here today, and still get high FPS. So the RX 6700 coupled in with the i3 12100F, this is a great combo for PC gaming. Though I hope you guys enjoyed today's budget build. I'll put some links in the description below for you if you wanna check out and build something similar to this, since we did use some used parts, but it's never been a better time to build a gaming PC. Price is just so good on the low end and mid range. And I think that's where you should be looking at if you're a PC gamer. I always prefer the budget, the value stuff, because that's what I'm all about here at Tech Air City. I love value for money. So I'm gonna be focusing more on this kind of stuff because I just love the PC market right now. It's finally getting good again after just a miserable 2021 and even 2022. There, was, there wasn't a whole lot of PC builds here at Tech Air City, mainly because the new part prices were pretty bad. And also the used parts, it was hard to pick up a lot of good consistent deals. But on top of that, recommend people, oh, you can get this for this price because it was kind of more rare. But now when I go part time, there's good prices on used GPUs, used CPUs, new CPUs, everything's returning to normal. Nature is healing in the PC world. And this PC, should definitely signify how good the healing is. But if you guys have any thoughts and opinions on this PC, would there be some things you would change? Do drop a comment in the comment section below. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from a PG, PB James. And they asked, do we think 12th gen CPU prices are going to keep falling or buy now? So it depends on which 12th gen you're looking at. Uh, I think on the low end, you're not really gonna get a whole lot cheaper on a 12th gen, at least for the next few months, than it already is. It's 100 bucks for an extremely relevant CPU. But if we're looking at the higher end stuff, I've seen 12,900Ks and 12,700Ks going for really cheap prices. And I think they're coming down to the bottom already. Because I think people are saying, oh wow, I can get this CPU for so cheap. And for instance, I think I saw a 12,700K for around 200, $50 or something like that. But it, when they go down to these prices, they quickly get sold out and then they bump back up again. So if you know something is a really good price, especially in terms of its performance for what you're getting, then don't be afraid to go and get it. I don't think it's gonna get a whole lot cheaper. So 12th gen prices, we predicted a few months ago that they would come down, especially the high-end stuff. And it looks like it's come down, it's bottoming out here and I would say they're not gonna come down a whole lot more. So hopefully that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and don't forget to hit that like button on the way out and I will catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.